Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with the mighty John Riggs. <laughs> How's it going, dude? Good. How do you feel? We need to come up with a, the do the rock sign. Okay. And then I'll do the shocker thing, and maybe if we connect in the middle. <laughs> kind of like the shocker All thing. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, huh. That, that didn't work anyway. <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> Try to come up with like a, 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 a non-bro fist. Yeah, yeah, so something just right. you and I have, right? Here we go. Go for it. Oh, what are we doing? Nanu, nanu, oh. nanu, nanu. There you go. There we, nanu. Nanu. Okay. <laughs> Dude, why are we here today? We have the Game Boy Buyer's Guide. Woohoo! This is one of my other favorite game systems of all time. They're all my favorite game systems of all time, but this one especially holds a dear place in my heart. Huh. Well, this is gonna be pretty cool because I did not necessarily grow up with the, the original Game Boy or Game Boy Color. Okay. And so I am going to be the person who asks you all the dumb questions in this video because oh, no. I don't know much about it. I do have these systems, but again, I acquired them late in the game okay. at garage sales, and so I, hear you. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. All right, you ready to do this? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. All right, let's take a look. All right, dude, so what do you got for me here? Uh, well, I want to cover uh, the systems themselves, the okay. hardware, um, go over a few accessories, mm -hmm. and then if you're looking at collecting day one, uh, some great games that you can't go wrong with. Cool. Sounds good. Should we start off with the classic? Yes. This is the iPhone case. No, this is the. <laughs> this is where it comes from. This is the classic Game Boy. This is the DMG for Dot Matrix Game Boy, and this is where it all began back in 19... Dot Matrix, wow. Yeah, so it'll, um, huh. it, you might see it referred to as Game Boy DMG or something like that. Uh -oh. um, um, I had no idea. Came back in 1989, and this to me, when it first came out, I was such a huge uh, Nintendo fan that this was basically a portable Nintendo, and it blew my mind. I could actually take right. it with me and everything. Right. Um, it has its flaws <laughs> that I almost want to cover immediately, um, yeah. and that is that it is four shades of green. <laughs> there are, it, they could have went black and white. I don't know why they went with the pea green uh, color scheme, but it's like, and it's not even like a good green. Yeah. It's like a yeah. like pea green. If, you're, if, if your pea is that green, see a doctor. <laughs> if you poop that green, uh, you should probably. Get, like cut back on the green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, you don't need that much salad. Don't need some, diet. not not so much processed uh, food coloring and all that. Um, however, it was a step up from before this, We all we had were like the Tiger handhelds. Right. So this, you could actually play actual games, like Nintendo games on, Game Boy, but you couldn't later on. I mean, at first, the games were, oh, I hate to admit it, but there were, the graphics weren't all that great. There's a lot of ghosting, which is when it becomes blurry. So you're talking about the early games on this. The early games okay. on this. Okay. Um, and when you play games on this Game Boy. However, it still stood the test of time, and um, I really, when I got one, I mostly use it for puzzle games, because mm -hmm. you're not moving so fast, like in Super Mario Land and stuff yeah. like that, where it's like, oh, Super Mario Land. It doesn't really look like Mario, but kind of <laughs> plays like it. And then there's like a few other games like that too. So mostly I use this uh, for puzzle games. I like puzzle games. So, so well, I, I mean, limitations aside, I think what's really interesting about Nintendo is that they are always sort of focusing on what's right for the market at that time. And, mm -hmm. and at this time, having a screen like this, powered by batteries that, that didn't, yep. you, you didn't need six batteries, right? Nope, it's a four double A's. There, right. was, there is an AC adapter as well, um, AC adapter here on the side. Um, so you can have it tethered to your AC power, um, or you can take it with you. And yeah, I mean, that was probably the best that you could do mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Although there is a yes. huge disadvantage to this that I think uh, was shocking to me when I first picked it up because yeah. it's like, I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> because in this day and age, having something that's either front lit or back lit is like a no-brainer, right? right. Well, this is just dark. There is no yeah. lit. You have to play, <laughs> I, many a night I'd fall asleep laying on my bed, my, yeah. my arm is being a pinched nerve so I lose feeling, and I have this kind of aimed at the light and everything yeah, trying yeah. to do that. Um, <laughs> it, and yeah, there's no backlighting, so when you put it, when you put this up to the tail of the tape, along with uh, Game Gear or the or, or the Atari Lynx or even the Turbo Express, which I also had have, um, it doesn't quite match up to those power wise but the charm of Nintendo and the great library yeah. and the marketing is what made this one uh, really stand out yeah and honestly I mean if you are a little kid and you are in the playground right 
this works great, right? You can oh, sit sure. there with the sun, you know, <laughs> blaring on it, and you can play games, yeah. and, and it 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 works really well. It so, came in handy for me because I'm I'm in Yakima, Washington, and uh, my grandma lived in Tacoma, mm -hmm. so we drive over the pass every several times a year. Before that, it was either reading Nintendo Power, but when this came out, I was like, oh, cool! I actually can spend two hours playing video games on the road. It was also when I learned I had motion sickness, so uh -oh. I, had to, I had to ration my time quick, pretty quickly. But. The one thing I would say though, is for me, going back to the Game Boy, it is a very comfortable system. I mean, it's big, right? I mean, it's it, a pretty it, now it's laughably big, but I, it's still no at the really... time it's and it's still pretty light too, as far yeah. as you know, I mean, this one has batteries in it yeah. and a game, and it's, it, I mean, you could totally rock this, you know. Absolutely. So that's what makes it, um, that's what makes it great and portable. Does it fit in my back pocket? I think it might. Wait a minute. Look at that. Oh. How do you like that, huh? You should go walk around with that and bust it out, like, on the bus or something yeah. like that. You'd be so cool. Pardon me. <laughs> Hipster over here. Yeah. Playing my Game Boy, playing my Dr. Mario, you know. So, okay, so that's the original. This is the original. And, uh, very quickly, Nintendo was smart enough to include Tetris as the pack-in. Right. The biggest video game of all time. Right. Um, they could have, today, if it was back then, they would say the Game Boy is separate, Tetris is separate. We know you're going to buy Tetris anyway. Um, but they were smart enough to say, we want people to buy this. Yeah. So it came free with, with Tetris. With a great game. I promise you, and please leave a comment, I promise you there were moms out there who bought a Game Boy for themselves. Because it came with Tetris, they didn't need to buy any other game ever. Yeah. yeah. So good to go. And so. it's still fun to play even today. I love it. Yeah. I, I do play mine every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the first model. What happened after that? Um, that model was it for several years. Mm -hmm. And then around, I want to say it was 96 or so, came out with something called, I'll have you this one. This is the Game Boy Pocket. I've never seen this before. The Game Boy Pocket came out uh, later on, much lighter, yeah, as you can tell. Uh, a sleeker model. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, black and white as opposed to green and oh, green. Okay. So because of that and because of everything else, um, the ghosting is almost completely gone. Oh, so okay. when this model came out, I could go back and play the Mario. Mario Land games that I missed out on. I huh. could play the Castlevania games I missed out on, the Mega Man games. Uh, it was hard for me to play with the old model because I like moving faster. I don't like taking step by step. Yeah, sure. When this came out, th this was a game changer for me. Wow, interesting. Um, and it also works on only, if you open up the back, four AA compared to two AAA. That's nice. Um, there's still no backlighting. There's still no battery charger. Two AA or two AAA batteries. I think the the battery life was something like 10 to 15 hours, which yeah. isn't that big, but it's all day. At yeah, least. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So, um, But this was the next model. Unfortunately, this model and the old model, I believe you need to use two different... Uh, all right, let me see here. Right, now it's going to open up. Have it over here. Yep. The old connector. Different model. Is this the link cable you're talking about? This is the link cable. Uh, um, because you can do two players simultaneous if you both have the same game. And unfortunately, see the two different sizes there. Oh, they changed it. They changed yeah. it. Uh, why Ooh. would you do that? So, <laughs> um, but if you want to play two player games uh, simultaneous, you need two Game Boys and you need two copies of the game. Okay. But that is an option. And um, Yeah, I mean, that's cool. I loved it. So huh. this, this, is, this is the next model to what's about to happen. Okay, and then after that? <laughs> after that, now that's Game Boy Classic. Right. Now we get into Game Boy Color. Hmm. Along the way too, between these two, there was the Game Boy Play It Loud series where you're like, oh, well, let's remarket the Game Boy under different colors. I don't have any of those. Okay. Um, Game Boy Pocket as well. But then the Game Boy Color, this was the first time I ever saw people buying more than one of the same game system. I've never even heard of that. I mean, people do it all the time now. It's like, oh, here's the, you know, the Zelda version of the oh, 3DS okay. and all that. And I was like, you're buying, you already have a Game Boy. Why do you need two Game Boys? Right. Because um, people want different colors, right? And then they came out with different colors. Now, yeah. this technically, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, is two different systems. Right. But it's two different systems, like the Nintendo DS to the Nintendo 3DS. Okay. They're both still 8-bit. Well, and it's interesting from a collecting standpoint. Uh, often Game Boy, Game Boy Color are completely like together. I mean, when, when you're looking for games, often it's just original games. They're all Boy. lumped in together. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll show you some of the games too. But there are some games, uh, like the Game Boy Color, is backwards compatible, compatible with the Game Boy. However, unfortunately, um, any game that's Game Boy Color specific won't play on a Game Boy, okay. only on Game Boy Color. Right. Um, but this one, still not backlit, still not a battery charger. It uses two, is it four AA? It uses two AA. Okay. Um, but the battery life on this is a monster. Like this uh, battery life is like 30 hours. Hmm. 
It's nice looking too. Like I really like the look of it. It, it just yeah, slightly refined, but it, it's a nice looking hand. Has a little bit of a little yeah. little bedunk a dunk there. <laughs> yeah, you can hold on to it. A little comfortable for the fingers there. Um, now oh, this is pretty cool. Now going from you know from obviously black and white to color. I mean, it must yeah. have been radical at the time. It's like holy. Oh, you know. it was um, it was what I was waiting for this whole time. Yeah, I was like, great. Now I can play the games in color, so it's not too weird like so everything's black and white so there's a lot of colors on screen mm -hmm. a lot of games look great again there's no ghosting or anything going on there's no blurry effects when you're running around um and it's, it's funny because sometimes i'm so engrossed in a game like i'm there like i'm in hyrule or whatever the case is but i pause my game to and put it down somewhere else and go somewhere else and it's funny like when i see like from far away over here it's like that whole universe is that little thing <laughs> yeah it's all in this little deal, though. So, um, so how how does original Game Boy games look on the color? They look fantastic. Um, if you play a classic Game Boy game, just for the sake of demonstration here, mm -hmm. you pop it in there. You do that. Um, it looks great. It defaults to kind of a black and white, but then as it's powering on, and this is the trick, and I hope you know this. If not, I'm going to tell you. As it's powering on, if you hold like up or down or left or right or a variation of like hold A and up it'll give you different color palettes. Oh, really? So even though it might be black and white, um, while it's powering on, you can do, there's a color, there's a button combination for, if you're doing like the classic uh, Legend of Zelda, it has a color version of it, but if you're playing the non-color variant, but you want Legend of Zelda to be green-ish, um, you can do a certain color variation, so there's some green and some browns in there. And I everything see. Too. Huh, that's um, cool. And Mega Man too. Mega Man, <laughs> uh, Mega Man on the Game Boy Color is pink. By default. <laughs> That's so, not right. <laughs> that is not right. And that is certainly not what you want when you're battling. Uh, <laughs> not too threatening, Mega Man. Uh, but there is a way that you, you can push like down and B or something like that. Then it'll turn Mega Man blue. It might change some of the other background colors. Yeah. Uh, but there's a way to colorize uh, uh, colorize the black and white Game Boy games. Oh, okay, That's, and it's cool. pretty cool how that does that. Another thing I noticed here, too, is the see-through. That was such a 90s thing, right? Like, it was. You man. know? I guess you had like the IMAX, but it all is sort of like see through. Ooh, look, you can see the electronics in yeah. there. Oh, that's a Coleco Chameleon, right? You know what that is? <laughs> could, be, could be, could <laughs> be. Maybe. Um, it was, and even the Game Boy Color games were all in a, in a transparent card form. It was a very, very 90s that's thing. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Huh. So, okay. Um, so this is the hard, the cool thing about the Game Boy Color as well, instead of using a link cable, it's IR. So as long as you're in the same room, kind of facing each other, you can do like Pokemon and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Two player. Huh. Okay. Love it. So, Game Boy and uh, these, as you can, I mean, I have a few of them here. Um, I don't want to put a price out there on what they're worth, but if you're looking for one, you're not going to have any trouble finding one ever. Well, one of these had a sticker from Value Village on it and it said $8. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> but I found a couple of them <laughs> at garage sales for, you know, a couple bucks. I mean, yeah. A lot of times people are just try trying to get rid of them, um, but I I'm sure there probably are some special editions oh, out there that, that are kind of collectible, um, expensive. Right. Th this is not a Pikachu edition, but they have the Pikachu edition yellow. Mm -hmm. um, there are some Japanese variants, um, and as from what I understand, they're also very, very easy to mod. So if you want to put a backlight on a classic Game Boy or something mm. like that. And for me, the best part, I'm a huge import gamer. There is no restrictions. No, no, no restrictions. That's nothing. Awesome. So if you find classic Game Boy games that are Japanese or whatever, you don't need to put them through a patch. Yeah, you saw. don't need a converter. Here we go. <laughs> There's one of them. That's, uh, it's Kirby. That's Kirby. That's uh, Kirby Tilt and Tumble huh. uh, for the Game Boy Color in Japan, and it works just as well as any other game. Wow, oh, that's awesome. So, and there's that transparent, uh, pink transparency there. I know, it's awesome. Looking, isn't it? <laughs> so, should we talk a little bit about accessories? We can go over some accessories. Okay. So, one of the earliest Game Boy memories for me yes. is seeing my young niece with a Game Boy, and she had this monstrosity <laughs> strapped to it yep. with, with external speakers, oh, yeah. a micro... micro uh, it's like, a magnifier. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then like lights and sure. My God, it was, it was a little like, joystick and the buttons elevated a little yes, bit. Yes, yes. I mean, it was crazy. To, it was amazing to see. So, it was like a man going inside a mecha suit. So it's like here's this little teeny guy <laughs> in this giant thing. Um, man, it, and it had to have weighed a couple of pounds. It was trying ridiculous. To play this thing. Like, you know. <laughs> But she swore by it, right? Because it, it, essentially what it did, it addressed all of the things that people didn't like about it, where, you know, no, no lighting, all that sort of right. stuff, louder speakers. <laughs> um, and all of that. And all of that. So specifically, I think she had the Handy Boy. It's called the Handy Boy, which yeah. sounds like it might get set a, maybe like a rub and tug, a nail salon or something like that somewhere. <laughs> get yourself a Handy Boy over the weekend. Uh, they're, they're hard to come by. 
no fun intended. And they are, uh, and they're getting up there in price too. I know. People are looking for these things and complete. You can get pieces of them, but to find one complete, uh, I knowing we were going to do this video, yeah. um, I, I was reaching out to people a couple months in advance, and I I couldn't find. I it. tried to as well, and it's like I mean, not and, worth it. <laughs> and there was one locally, and it was, and like you said, it was in the box, and I want to say that it was eighty or ninety dollars. I, I believe like, it. I don't need it that yeah. badly. <laughs> you can get a classic Game Boy for like ten bucks, but then the add-on that's <laughs> yeah. the that's the investment. But it looks it, it's insane. It oh yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you're a Game Boy collector, you should probably have that in your collection just because of its <laughs> uniqueness. So what are some other accessories though? Um, you do have, you don't have to have the handy boy to get the magnifier. Uh, this one here, still uh, sealed, is mm -hmm. the uh, the Game Boy magnifier. It just, mm -hmm. and it literally just, it's a little clip-on magnifying lens too, uh, so you're not like me with my bad eyesight looking at this thing all up close or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I can see that as being pretty nice actually. Yeah, hmm. so there's one of those. Okay. And then when it comes to the Game Boy Color, um, I think easily the most popular accessory uh, has to be the Game Boy camera. Oh, right, right. Which is this guy here and the accompanying Game Boy printer. So first of all, it's so <laughs> wild that you would have a, a handheld that would have a printer. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was during a time, I think, when uh, those like Japanese style photo booths were okay. so popular. You get a okay. little thing and you get like a sticker. Uh, I remember uh, I remember uh, Kinokuniya in Seattle had one of those up in their little area there. Okay. Um, but you literally could take a picture. There's a couple of games you could play on there. Like you'd actually get a screen cap of your face, and that would be your character in the game. And then with a link cable, um, you could actually attach that to the Game Boy printer. It's a thermal paper, so there is paper in here. It won't print now hmm. because it uses a thermal printer, and it just needs different paper. Right. Um, but you could take a picture and then print out um, a photo of you and your friends. Which is kind of cool, actually. Kind of stick it you to know. your little uh, teenage uh, window <laughs> mirror there. Um, that's pretty funny. The other thing I don't have, I wish I did. They literally made a Game Boy sewing machine. What? From Singer. It was a really. It was a cartridge. You put it in your Game Boy, and it had an accompanying sewing machine. Wait, wait. Okay, but to to do oh, so you would would you take a photo and then they would? I, I don't think so. I think it just worked like any other sewing machine. But the Game Boy was the computer device to help you stitch what you were like what kind of stitching you wanted to use. Huh. I've never used it, I've only seen it. Wow. Um, it's one of those I wish I had, but, but I, it's one of the crazy things where it started to, and that's where Nintendo said, hey, we can use this Game Boy for more than just video games. Right. Um, now you go to Safeco Field and you see people ordering beers off their DS. You know, this is kind of the precursor to that. That reminds me actually, is that there's been people who have modded Game Boys or Game Boy Colors for music. So you'll see DJs who oh are, who are God, creating yeah. original- Yeah, chip tunes and all that. Yeah. Isn't that I great? Mean, off, of, off of a Game Boy, that's yeah. freaking awesome. The Game Boy is one of the most manipulable uh, systems out there. Moddable, everything you want to do hmm. to it. Uh, so many great mods that are out there, not just backlighting and sound and replacing the LEDs, but yeah, like chip tuning and yeah. uh, creating, I mean, they, do, they throw concerts using Game Boys. How crazy <sighs> is that? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right, well, so let's move on to the games. So it's all about. All right, well, in front of me, I see a stack of games here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll go over a few of them here for different reasons mm -hmm. uh, pretty quickly here. Um, now, when the Game Boy came out, like this is uh, Legend of Zelda, Link's mm -hmm. Awakening, um, this was black and white. Right. When the Game Boy Color came out, they're like, oh, well, now that it's black and white, we can actually add color. We can make Link green. We can uh, put blue water and everything. So that's what they brought out. A variation. I have seen this before, and I didn't know. Does it say color on it? It says DX. Um, with, it's like the deluxe oh, version, so it's the I same have game. No idea. I think there is an extra dungeon in that that's not on the original one. But huh. if you play that one, it's uh, made for Game Boy Color, but it will play in a Game Boy Color or Game Boy Classic uh, system. Oh, um, okay. And if you play that through a Super Game Boy, which is the Super Nintendo Game Boy adapter, it'll give you the default color scheme and give you like a Zelda um, like wallpaper. I've seen the DX before and I had no idea what that meant. That's why. I'm, I'm gaining the knowledge here. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm gaining the knowledge. Um, the difference between the Game Boy, and you see different colors and different variations. Mm -hmm. uh, here's three different ones. Like this is Game Boy. Th this is a Game Boy game. Right. It'll play in a Game Boy color. It'll play it in Game Boy. It's just going to be standard gray. Standard gray, whatever the case is. This one. It's kind of technically a Game Boy Color game because it plays in a Game Boy Color, but will also play in a classic Game Boy as well. So it's multi-changeable. Hmm. Um, and because it's color, and you can tell because it has a different color to the um, the background and everything. I see. Um, it will uh, give you like a proper color scheme. Like, and this will happen a lot of times too. You'll notice a fading at the very top. 
of the uh, Game Boy games, and it's probably from when they're in the back. You got your fingers like on it, and it rubs off the label and everything. Uh, so, you know, it's funny you mention that because I've often wondered, like, why do these old Game Boy games have proper looking color? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> huh. So those ones will. Sometimes they will. If you look very closely, it'll say like Super Game Boy. Like, I mean, there's a little logo in the corner that'll tell you that okay. it's it's put for it. Hmm. And then when you have the Game Boy Color game. This is a Game Boy Color. Right. This will not work in a classic Game Boy. Okay. And, um, and these are typically see-through. And these are typically see-through and they'll also have the beveled top. Oh, kind of like the back. Yes, exactly. So like this one, it's um, concaved. This one's convex. Oh, okay. And that's um, and that's why. And it's because there's this has a little notch in the top there, and these ones do not. Oh. So it hmm. won't work even if you found a way to jam it in there. It'll still say uh, this game is made for Game Boy Color. Good okay. luck. Hmm. <laughs> that's how that works. That's good to know. Um, now this is something I've seen out in the wild. This is actually my copy of Perfect Dark, and I'm like, what is this thing here? <laughs> it's, a, it's a battery pack. You can put a battery pack in there, and there's um, yeah. the reason why is because the Game Boy itself didn't have rumble features. It didn't have accessories. You don't have a controller. The system is the controller. Right. So to have the game rumble, you don't need to, uh, but you can put a battery in there. And there's like a Pokemon pinball game. There's mm -hmm. a few of them that do that, where that's you can add the battery, and uh, it'll make it so the rumble feature is in the game itself. Oh, you can see the rumble. Yeah, it just and it just shakes back and forth and huh. That's how that works. That's cool. Um, this game, uh, Kirby's Tilt and Tumble, um, has a tilting mechanism to it, which is the oh. so when you pop it in, instead of like using the controller, you actually have to use the um, is that the Game Boy Color. It is not, but it'll still work. It, like so, you actually have to play it like this and kind of flip Kirby up and all. that. Oh, really? So that that makes it innovative and everything. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then this game, I had to show you because it's another innovation that I've never heard of on any other Game Boy games. Um, this is actually a tip I learned from the uh, the Rerez uh, YouTube channel. Mm. Is he said, um, and it works because I tried it. Uh, Space Invaders, one of my favorite games of all time. Right. If you play this game through the Super Game Boy adapter for the Super Nintendo, it'll unlock a full screen Super Nintendo eyesed uh, Space Invaders game from, really? a, from a Game Boy game. Wow. And it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's really cool. So if you have this, you should play it through it. And huh. uh, it, it's, it's, it's that extra option that pops up and you're like, whoa, this is, and it's like Super Nintendo on a Game Boy game. It's crazy. Okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> huh. that's and that's fun. how that works. Okay, and then, so those are some of the variations, but you right. do have some recommendations. These are games that you're like, Anybody can go out and get these day one if you're gonna jump in on the Game Boy, Game Boy Color. These are the ones that I would recommend. First okay. of all, well, we gotta talk about Pokemon. Right, right, it's, right, right. It's the, it's the system that sold a billion copies and yeah. for all the right reasons. This, yeah, we're absolutely. celebrating the 20th anniversary, right? Yeah. Holy moly. And it was like the perfect game for this. It was on the go. You in order to in order to get all the Pokemon, and I'm such a noob with all this. <laughs> uh, you had you had to to, to to trade with other people, right? You could, yeah. Um, you could battle other people for their Pokemon. Um, you could uh, play. And this was the first game I actually literally saw people like I'm. I was a closet gamer for so long because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I do it at home, but then when I'm out in public, it's it's its own thing. It was the first time this was the game that I ever saw people playing it like waiting for the bus. Mm. I actually saw people taking their Game Boys out and like I was like, they're actually playing this game. Like walking around looking at it, that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty cool though, actually. But pretty cool. There's yeah. a few of them that came out with red and blue or yeah. green in Japan. Um, I have the special Pikachu edition. I figured if I'm gonna have a Game Boy and a bunch of Game Boy games, I, have, I better have at least one Pokemon game. Yeah, yeah, and I, I have the red one as well, but I think I, I just found it, you know, at a, like a good <laughs> cell. Hey, you found it, yay! yay! You threw a Pokeball at it, you <laughs> caught it. <laughs> Love that one. Um, I did a, we did the Nintendo Entertainment System buying guide, mm -hmm. and I got a lot of flack for not including a Mega Man game in there. Oh. <laughs> now, not because of that reason, but because I actually want to include it. Um, you should get a Mega Man game. I actually brought Mega Man 2. It's one of my favorite ones. Hmm. Um, the cool thing with this one, because when you think Game Boy and you think Nintendo, and you're like, oh, cool, I have a Game Boy. I can get the Game Boy version of DuckTales. I can get the Game Boy version of... Yeah, kind of on the go to play it. Right. Yeah. Um, Mega Man 2, the Mega Man series for Game Boy, is kind of like a Mega Man whatever number 0. 0.5 hmm. in a way. So this game, like in Mega Man 2, you start out with four bosses instead of eight hmm. from Mega Man 2. But it features the features from Mega Man 3. So in this one, you can do the slide and you can use Rush. So you can do Mega Man 3 oh, cool. for the Nintendo but do it for the Nintendo 2 for the Game Boy. Huh. After, you, after you kill those eight, uh, the four bosses, 
Then you have to fight four bosses from Mega Man 3. So so basically there's a reason to own this essentially. Yeah, it's and the, an exact copy. The levels are different. Um, it's kind of cool to see like, oh, I can use Mega Man 2 weapons to defeat Mega Man 3 bosses. Um, and then the same thing for Mega Man 3 for oh. the Game Boy. You can you know, use the Mega Man 4 features like the power up and all like the, uh, the charging your uh, blaster and everything. Um, and the thing is, it's so funny to see that game play through a Game Boy because you're playing like in a little square block and you don't really feel it until you fight the boss battle. And then like you're in this boss battle where you're just like, all right, I have nowhere to move. <laughs> I'm stuck in a closet and being stuck in a closet is the last thing you want to do when you're fighting a, someone named Hard Man. <laughs> Not going to happen. But the Mega Man games, even if you play the Mega Man games for the Nintendo, it's a different experience. And, it's, wow. and they're still fun. It's still Mega Man. Awesome. Except for, again, he's pink. When you're so you have to change the color. That old a little pink bit. thing. Actually, I, I I like him pink myself. Yeah. I, I'd add some character to it. Uh, one of my favorite games for Game Boy is Gargoyles Quest. I've heard of this. Yes. Um, it plays it, kind of like an action. It it looks like it might be an RPG, but then it uh, turns into the side-scrolling platforming, kind of like a Ghost and Goblins. Um, being Firebrand from Ghost and Goblins. Don't ask me why Patrick Star is on the cover there. Oh yeah. Huh. <laughs> um, but you you can you hover for a little bit. You can earn power ups along the way and it goes to an overworld map where you have to go to the next town and there's some uh, random encounters along the way as well, uh, as well that is a very very excellent Ooh. game and that's the starter it's that one then there's Gargoyles Quest 2 for the Nintendo up to Demon's Crest for the Super Nintendo and it all started with that one wow cool awesome awesome uh, I, I do own this one <laughs> yes Donkey Kong which I love because it starts out as classic Donkey Kong yeah you climb the ladders you try to save the princess or whoever and then at the very, very end, then that's when it turns into a whole new game of Donkey Kong, where it's still the Donkey Kong charm, but then you can do like jumps to Jimmy Key Jump Higher. You have to grab the key, which opens the door. Um, has excellent sound, especially if you play that through a Super Game Boy, through the Super Nintendo. Like on the like she says, help. Um, on the Game Boy, it just sounds like her saying, hum, hum. <laughs> But when you play it on the Super Game Boy, she actually says, "Help, help!" Oh, I was like, "That's so cool!" So it has those huh. cool features there with that one. But you don't need you don't need that. And there's and uh, boss battles. You actually battle Donkey Kong at the end of every like four levels or something like that. This game comes up time and time again when you're talking about like the best games of the Game Boy. And, I, and at first I was like, "Really, Donkey what? Kong?" Yeah, what? I mean, yeah, it's a different Donkey Kong. Yeah, there's like cool. eight worlds. You save along the way. Um, and then and I can't talk highly enough about it. It's it's really a super super fun game. Cool. I love it. Uh, we got to talk about Mole Mania. I, I, I saw this in your list. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Mole Mania um, is made by a guy that you may have heard of, Shigeru Miyamoto. Oh. Known for the Mario games, right. Zelda and all that. Um, lesser known, he made a game called Mole Mania. And it is, it probably is my favorite game for the Game Boy. Hmm. Um, it has the charm that Miyamoto brings. It could just be, you play as a mole, you get to get to the end, and you save the day. But of course, he's tugs in your heartstrings by, somebody steals your kids. <laughs> and I was like, and I have children, I have yeah. kids. So I was like, oh, now I have to play this game until I beat it. Um, a really fun uh, action puzzle game, hmm. where um, along the way, there's two levels. You're, you're a mole, so you get to dive underground, pretty much wherever you want. Like if there's a wall on your path, you can just like dig underground and go underneath it um, and then pop back up the other side. And you, there's like bowling balls in this garden for some reason. Hmm. And um, you can use that as weapons to kill the guys and all that. But it's a super, super fun action puzzle. Wow. Game. I will have to pick this and up. And Shigeru Miyamoto. You can't Yeah, no on. doubt. That should help you there. Uh, this game, Quirk. Awesome puzzle game. I saw this on the list. And I'm like, what? What the hell is this? <laughs> you play as a uh, tomato. I don't know what it is with me and tomatoes. Is it quirk? Or quirk. Quirk. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's a puzzle game where you uh, to go through the maze. And this is one of the first. I don't. I don't think it's a launch title, hmm. but it's one of the earliest, earlier Game Boy games. Hmm. Um, so it has that charm too. It, it plays Link Cable for two players simultaneous. It's a. It's a maze game where sometimes there's a hole in the ground, so you have to push the block into the hole so you can walk across hmm. it. A lot of turnstiles, so you have to like find a way to go through the turnstiles so they're not blocking your path and all that and um it just kind of like a maze you just kind of go through the maze go up the levels and everything it's, it's a lot of fun and it's that's one of those games you could probably find it for a buck if you look for it i'm gonna be looking for this it's awesome <laughs> i love it um because sometimes you just need to shoot i have a nice day in the face you got faceball 2000 it is and i can't believe i'm saying this about a game boy game it is a first person arena shooter huh for the game boy who knew who knew <laughs> Uh, you play as a, 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 assumedly, a have a nice day face. You can make yourself so you're coned or cylinder or whatever. 
and uh, you go around and you shoot the other players until you've killed them all, basically. And it's mm. a, and it's arena shooter. It's first person. Um, the best they can do for a Game Boy, which is actually pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Um, they did make a Super Nintendo version of this, but it doesn't have the same charm, I don't think. Yeah, I, I know I've heard of it before, so okay, it was on the Super Nintendo. They had one for the Super Nintendo as well. Huh. And it's called Faceball 2000, and and, uh, and when you die, it says, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. Uh, we have here what could be one of my favorite Super Mario Brothers games of all the Super Mario Brothers games. You know, everyone mentions this game. Yeah. I know. It's, it's and like, and it's, it's Super Mario Land 2. Um, I like it. Six golden coins. And the six golden coins. Yes. Um, the creativity involved, I think, because I'm used to Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Land, where you just like you go through the level. It's the same kind of levels, the underwater, the platform, and it's right. like, oh, and it's fun, and it's fine. But this game brought out like the, oh, here's the world where you're inside a toy Mario, and there's like gears and gadgets and stuff hmm. like that, and there's the spooky houses and the tree and all that. Huh. Um, and it's it started out with like the open world um, element where you can kind of like a Super Mario world or any of the Super Mario games anymore uh, do that. But um, I remember this one, you can just, you can kind of go anywhere you wanted to go from the get go in oh. a way. And then when you unlock the levels and you can cross the bridge and uh, do those ones too. And it was the first appearance of a uh, Wario in that one too. Oh really? Yeah. This, this comes up time and time again. So awesome. That's how that works. We have Final Fantasy Adventure which isn't even a Final Fantasy game. Okay, so I've, I've heard of these. What, so what is it? <laughs> Final Fantasy Adventure, um, you use your sword, kind of like a Zelda game. Um, however, it uses the attack feature where once you swing your sword, you have to build up your power again. The more power you have, the harder your sword slash will be, much like Secret of Mana, hmm. because this is the precursor to Secret of Mana. Oh, is it? It started out as that. It started out as that game and then become, but nobody's heard of Secret of Mana at the time, so other people know Final Fantasy. I see. Let's call it oh, Final that's... Fantasy Adventure. Okay, so that's why they did that. That's exactly why they did that. Interesting. And then we have Final Fantasy Legend 2, again, not a Final Fantasy game. Okay. And there's Final Fantasy, uh, I brought Legend 3 as well, uh, but with the Final Fantasy Legend series, um, hmm. it plays much like the Tales of series. Oh, okay. So it started at, and so you get the um, RPG style, but then you're behind the back looking at the monster in front of you, um, like Final Fantasy Mystic Quest for oh, the Super okay. Nintendo, huh. and that's the same the same reasoning, the same idea. Wow. So Final Fantasy was, Nintendo was banking on the Final Fantasy name to launch a few of these titles. <laughs> Huh, that's cool. <laughs> and that was another one in and of itself. Dude, so many interesting games. You, you brought up the variety here. RPGs, yeah. shooters, platformers, puzzle games. This is amazing. Yeah, and the Game Boy the Game Boy has a little bit of everything for a little bit of everyone. That's and, for sure. And don't you think that's the reason why people even today still love to collect for it? Oh, yeah. you can still pop these in and have a great time with them. Oh, yeah. And seriously, I mean, sometimes some of these games are cheaper than Atari games. That's you, true. You can find them in abundance. So <laughs> and that's, that's what I love about it. And it's hard to pick up the audio, but just... That sound here yeah. uh, doesn't get any better than that. Especially in a box, you yeah. know? <laughs> um, I, I keep all my games organized in my uh, desktop drawer, so I just pull it out and I'm looking for something. It's like, ah, that's not it. Nah, it's that's awesome, isn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, so uh, we'd love to know down in the comments if someone was to go out and buy a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, what, what games would you recommend? Let people yeah. know down in the comments, because there's hundreds perhaps thousands. <laughs> right. Um, the Game Boy Classic series, like these games here, I think there's like 400-ish. Okay. But then there's all the Game Boy Color games and all these other variants and all. It just it goes on and on and on. And some of these games are also getting up in price. In fact, like Mega Man, Mega Man 5 is going more for the Game Boy than it is for the Nintendo anymore. It, it's also worth noting, too, that um, the way I play these is not on a Game Boy, but actually on a Game Boy Advance SP. Yeah, me too. Which is pretty awesome because it's a backlit, well, the one I have is backlit, but it's basically a lit up screen and right. it looks and plays fantastic. And also the Retron 5, if you happen to have one of those, it'll upscale it to HD. So. Love that, yep. Um, yeah, there's plenty of ways to play Game Boy games if you don't want to have the actual system. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm the same as you. Uh, Game Boy Advance SP, I'm sure there'll be a Game Boy Advance buyer's guide. And, yes. Uh, you have, um, it was the Game Boy Advance SP was the first one with a battery charger built in mm. and has backlighting and um, and they're great. So a lot, lot of options. So, such a great legacy. It's so fun to collect <laughs> yeah, for. So. We could have talked about this for two days straight <laughs> yeah. and still not have covered everything, but just 
compress it down as much as we can. So thanks very much for coming on. Oh, here my and pleasure, doing man. This. So Thank where you. can people find you on the internet? Internet, uh, John Blue Riggs. My first name, my favorite color, my last name. Um, that's at Twitter and Instagram. And then I'm, I'm also on uh, YouTube as well. You can uh, search for Rigged Games or John Riggs, and uh, and I'll be I'll be popping up probably every other comment uh, in this video below too. You can <laughs> click yeah. on my name there. Uh, hacks and tutorials, and if you want to learn how to make repros and whatnot, uh, I'll be happy to help you out. Yeah, awesome channel. Such a cool guy, part of the community. Love it. Love having you on, dude. <laughs> Thanks. All right, guys. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thank you for subscribing. And take care. All right, let's do this again. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> John Riggs and I have done a bunch of other videos that you should definitely check out. If you are a fan of the original Nintendo, he and I did a buying guide, and then he also busted out a bunch of hidden gems for the original Nintendo. So definitely check that out. You're gonna to wanna to be subscribed to my channel because I release new videos twice a week on Tuesday and Friday.